Okay guys, winter is officially here in Alaska, as you guys can probably see. And I thought it would be an interesting video to kind of break down the differences and how we can stay sharp as bushcrafters, even in the bitter winter. So, before we get started, i got this nice jet boil, and I'm just going to be drinking some coffee. So, without any further ado, let's jump into this. Okay guys, so, like I said, winter does definitely make bushcrafting not only uh, different, but also a lot more challenging, especially if you live in a place like Alaska, like where I am right now, because our winters tend to be very cold. So I'm gonna be breaking down some of the differences of what you need to consider when doing winter bushcrafting. And those primary differences are going to be, one, the focuses of what bushcraft, the disciplines that we focus on more in the winter, and the key tools that we use more in the winter. We're also going to talk about how you can continue to keep your skills sharp in the winter time, because you don't want to let, especially in Alaska where our winters last can, or can last, upwards of six months, you want to continue to keep your skills sharp so that during our short summer months you can make the most of them and already be prepared and, you know, just never let your skills really dull. Okay, so to start off, let's talk about the core disciplines that we focus on during the winter. So the two largest disciplines that we focus on in winter bushcrafting is sheltercraft and firecraft. Now that may be kind of self-explanatory, but the primary reasons why we focus on those two above all else is because of two reasons. One, they're the most practical skills because it's going to be cold outside, so you want to keep yourself warm, firecraft. And two, you also don't want to be doing a lot of fine or you may not even be able to do a lot of fine uh, skills because usually, though today is a warmer day, usually your days are gonna be consisted of wearing a lot of winter gear. Now this is not complete heavy winter gear, but this is still kind of medium winter gear here. Of course I have gloves over there, but sometimes you may even have to wear mittens. And when you're wearing mittens, obviously your fine, you know, your skills, like your fingers, your dexterity, that all goes very, downhill very fast. So being able to practice uh, larger or more or less refined skills such as building shelters is the primary way to stay on top of skills. And like I said, sheltercraft and firecraft are going to be your top two uh, disciplines to practice. In addition to that, you'll also be able to practice pretty well resource gathering. What do I mean by resource gathering? I mean basically just going out, finding things like birch bark, your chagas, and you know different dried grass, uh, old man beard, old man's beard, and those different um, resources. So those are your top three disciplines, or at least the top three that I make sure to practice in the winter. Now the core tools or the key tools for winter are going to be complementary of those disciplines. So I actually have three of the tools, the three tools here. So generally, so generally in the winter, the top three key tools, while it is important to still have a good neck knife like the legome uh, or a battle lore, uh, as I've shown in the past, your primary tools that you'll be using are larger saws, axes, and hatchets. And I do want to key emphasize that larger saws because once again, when you're building shelters, you don't want something like a Baco Laplander, which I still love my Baco Laplander, but you need something a little bit bigger to take down bigger trees or at least to process them. As you could see today when I was doing my shelter build part one, I was using you know the hatchet and this larger saw in tow pretty well because in my specific conditions here, in my specific conditions here, a lot of the trees that I was working with were already dead and on the ground. So I would come in with my hatchet and take off or limb the tree and then I would saw it or buck it up with the buck saw. So that's a large portion of your tools and your key tools will reflect that and you want axes, you want hatchets, you want saws. These are not fine skill tools 
These are going to be more broad tools, but they'll allow you to still make fires or gather firewood with relative ease. They'll allow you to gather wood for construction with relative ease. And once again, you can still use all of these tools here with mittens, with gloves, in parkas, in your heavier uh, and more insulated uh, winter drafts. Okay, so lastly is how do you keep your skills sharp in the bitter winter? Now I know that the winter is not easy and today it is kind of easy because we're sitting at right around 35 above so it's not particularly cold today, but it still is, it's still chilly for sure, but um, it definitely gets a lot colder than that and so I will actually, before we go into that, I will say what are my operating ranges and from what I've experienced and my personal bushcrafting experience has led me to believe or led me to the practice that my operating range is anywhere from 40 above to negative 20 and past negative 20 you really become heavily reliant on fires so much so that your ability to go out and do other things aside from staying warm and staying close to a fire you know keeping warm food and warm liquids uh, you know, running through you really becomes hindered. And I'm not saying that you can't bushcraft at colder than negative 20, but what I was saying, and from my experience having bushcraft at colder temperatures, you really become reliant on heat past negative 20. So, you know, staying around a fire as opposed to going out and being able to get shelter materials or practice other parts of uh, bushcraft. So my operating range is 40 above to negative 20. Now, I really say 40 above, and I say that, and some people say, you know, well, why wouldn't you want to operate in anything hotter than that? And the primary reason is, like I said, we're talking specifically about bushcrafting in the winter, and in the fall and in the spring, we actually do get temperatures that are, you know, in the 50s or in the 55, especially, like I said, in your spring and your winter. And the reason why I don't like to bushcraft in anything warmer than 40 to 45 is if snow is already on the ground, and I'm talking about a little bit deeper snow than this, but if you have, you know, a few feet of snow, what ends up happening when it gets too warm is everything gets very wet. And uh, as in another video I'm gonna be doing here soon, in the winter, especially in the winter, it becomes very critical I'm not saying you can't get wet at all, but it becomes very critical that you stay as dry as you possibly can. And when it gets too warm out, it also gets very wet. In addition to this, things like ice start to become questionable of integrity. So it becomes more dangerous to come out if it gets too warm. So that's why my operating range for the winter is anywhere from positive 40 to negative 20 because at positive 40 you're about eight degrees above free the freezing point of you know water so you're beginning to kind of lose some of that solidness but it's not too bad and it, once again with things like ice if there's still several inches of ice you know most of your travel across ice will be fairly safe so that's why i say 40 to negative 20. Okay, so how do you keep your discipline or how do you keep bushcrafting sharp? Because like I said, as I mentioned, we have months and months of winter. The easiest way that I recommend to do this is really keeping an eye on your weather. There's always going to be, while by and large, there will be some weeks, some months, or some weeks and some days where it is just too cold to go out. But by and large, in a month's time, usually there's a few days, a handful of days, where that operating range of 40 above to negative 20 is there, even in our coldest months. And so I try to plan around those days and make sure that at least once a month, I'm still getting out. I'm still practicing some bushcrafting skills, you know, whether it be firecraft, shelter craft, and even if it's just to come out and, um, you know, just build upon a shelter that I already built, you know, or add more onto it, or, you know, just come out, start a fire, hang out here for a while, just practice skills that I can't practice at home, especially inside a house. And so I highly encourage, you know, even if it is a little bit chilly out, you know, to dress right and come out and practice your skills. That That is the big thing, at least once a month, because if you don't, you begin to not so much lose the skills, but, you know, your muscles get more easily fatigued if they're not continually keeping up with the types of stress and rigor that bushcrafting brings. 
So it's important to keep your body in that physical level of stamina and ability. And of course, your skills, your accuracy with an ax, you know, these are things that have to be practiced and honed in. And if you just stop using an ax, your accuracy with your ax will deteriorate. So definitely come out once a month, at least even in the winter when you don't feel like you want to and make some time for bushcrafting. It really will pay off, maybe not so much in the winter, but when it comes back to those spring, summer, fall months, you will really be thankful. Okay guys, so those are the biggest points and differences in how to keep yourself sharp, the operating range for bushcrafting. This is just what I've kind of learned in my experience working in Alaska in bushcraft or bushcrafting in Alaska, especially in the winter months. They are, I will say the winter months are some of the most fun months because they add such a different level of challenge to bushcrafting and how you operate and how you have to think about approaching situations. So I highly encourage coming out during the winter, even if it is, like I said, just once a month, keep your sh skills sharp and still learn how to do it because it's fun to watch people on YouTube make shelters in winter or camp out in the winter, but it's even more fun if you do it yourself.